Hello, let me introduce you to the state-of-the-art tethered bilayer lipid membranes we use in our research. If we deposit very pure gold onto a surface, or substrate if you like, we can create two metal electrodes. The bottom electrode you see here is what we call our tethering electrode. The upper, larger electrode we refer to as the counter electrode. To the lower electrode we can add special tethering chemistries. Typically we add slender chains of polyethylene glycol. The smaller chains you see here we refer to as spacer molecules. To attach to the gold they have a disulfide group. In order for the chemistries not to overcrowd the surface of the electrode, they are terminated by this benzyl group. And this group provides space laterally across the gold. The polyethylene glycol chains are terminated by this hydroxy group. That makes these molecules hydrophilic. The purpose of these spacer molecules is to provide some rigidity to the longer tether molecules in order that these longer tether molecules don't collapse or bend but are kept upright. Like the spacer molecules, these tether molecules are also attached to the gold by disulfide coordination chemistry. However, these tether molecules have a polyethylene glycol chain that is double the length of the spacer molecules. And they are terminated by a phytonyl group. This phytonyl group is hydrophobic. So, if our electrode is covered with these tether and spacer molecules, we can then introduce chosen lipids dissolved in ethanol. The nonpolar hydrophobic regions of the lipid molecules will selectively associate themselves with the hydrophobic regions of the tethering molecules. If we then exchange the ethanol with an aqueous buffer, such as phosphate buffered saline, the lipids will become anchored to the tethers and we will have subsequently formed a tethered bilayer lipid membrane. Ideally, we would like to cover the gold tethering electrode with our membrane. A neutron scattering data suggests that the membrane's distance from the gold is of the order of just 3 nanometers. Using confocal microscopy, we can get a better picture of what the membrane actually looks like. In this picture, we have added a fluorescent membrane dye to our tethered bilayer lipid membrane. We've, we then proceeded to vigorously perpet away some of the membrane, revealing the reflective gold surface. To demonstrate the membrane is actually, actually there, and that we're not simply re viewing reflection off the gold, we have photo bleached some of the membrane, which is these square regions here and here. The bright dots you see in this picture are residual lipid micelles and liposomes from the formation of the membrane. We measured these regions to be less than 1% of the total membrane surface and they subsequently have little or no impact on the function of these tethered bilayer lipid membranes. We typically use tethered bilayer lipid membranes to measure the insertion of various peptides and proteins into lipid bilayers. In order to achieve this, we need to keep the membranes in an environment where their surrounding solutions can be easily exchanged. So, our two opposing gold electrodes typically sit within a specially prepared cartridge chamber. Each cartridge has six wells for simultaneous 
simultaneous measurement across six tethered bilayer lipid membranes. Insertion of peptides and proteins into tethered bilayer lipid membranes is achieved by measuring changes in membrane conductance using AC electrical impedance spectroscopy. This is achieved by simply, simply sliding the cartridge into a specially designed impedance reader that then reports directly to a computer. And there you have a brief description of how these state-of-the-art tethered bilayer lipid membranes are created. These membranes can then be used as research tools to measure protein and peptide membrane interactions. I'd like to thank you for your attention.